the intro of Spencer. It was earlier this year when spring was in full blossom. The charismatic sun was kissing in every nook and corner of this exuberant land. Naked trees draping themselves beautifully in the thick green foliage. And roads beautifully painted by daisies, daffodils, and dandelions. Ah, oh, what a fest to our hungry eyes, isn't it? <laughs> and the week of finals, oh man. You know, sweatpants, baggy eyes, overly caffeinated, sleepy souls trying to memorize that year worth of material in that short little span of week. <laughs> On one fine final study night, on a whim, my best friend drops a bomb. Echo <coughs> called me up and said, Smith, do you want to go to Madagascar? And for a lot of people who don't know, Madagascar is this great red island on the southeast corner of Africa, one of the least developed nations in the world, and a biodiversity hotspot of the wilderness. From its staggering landscapes to breathtaking natural beauty, it's one of the most unique ecosystems on this earth. From endangered lemurs hopping around the trees to 2,000-year-old baobab trees standing tall like telegraph poles, smearing a silhouette in the skyline. It's fantastic. Here I was tired, bored, and exhausted, studying about drugs for arrhythmia. And this idea just came in like what we millennials call travel gas. <laughs> I had no idea what I'm getting into. I signed up for it, booked my flights, texted my mom, finished my finals, and here I am, pre-planning for the trip. As a good pharmacy student, I know, um, I had to do a little research. So I went on the CDC website and found out I need two things. A typhoid vaccine and a prescription, and a prescription for malaria. So just like how anyone would have done. I called in the student health center, got an appointment, and I was hoping and excited. For the first time, I'll get to use my insurance, the money that I've been paying for over years. <laughs> but reality, it was rejected completely and abruptly. Rather, they asked me to pay $200 for typhoid vaccine and $100 for travel consultancy. I'm a pharmacy student. With a quarter million dollar loans, there's no way I'm going to pay for it. <laughs> so I started looking out for options. I texted a few of my friends, googled some travel clinics, um, called in some pharmacies, and found a way out. I got my typhoid vaccine right here off campus in Grandview at Walgreens for free. And I got my prescription for Malaron to prevent malaria from helping hand clinics for free. So here I am, trying to piece this all together. What am I missing from this story? Why is my student health, health insurance charging me $300 where when I look out for options, I get everything for free. And in my research, I found this huge entity that has called ginormous amount of lack of transparency. But before that, let me show you some calculations I did. If the, <clears throat> if the prescription prices, if the milk prices rose just like the prescription prices since 1960s, a gallon would cost us $78. And if you're a little extra like me, who drinks almond milk, a gallon, <laughs> a gallon would co cost $184. It's insane. At least in my case, it was not that serious. But meet Alex Smith, a 26-year-old kid suffering from diabetes, who was kicked off of his mom's insurance when he turned 26, just how I was kicked off of my insurance my mom's entrance last month when I turned 26. The only difference is, I get to live. I get to stand right here in front of you while Alex's body lies dead in his apartment because of diabetic ketoacidosis. Because he could not afford the insulin. Because of the same lack of transparency. And it's not just me or Alex. One <coughs> out of 13 Americans reports to get sicker because of not taking the medication due to the cost. And 125,000 Americans die every single year because of non, because of cost-related non-adherence. It's no more a problem. It is a public issue, and we need to fix it. So, in this whole thing, who's supposed to be blamed? Wait a minute. Let's see who's visible to blame in today's society. It's either the drug manufacturers who spends 10 to 12 years to do research and innovate and spends billions of dollars to bring a cure to the market. Or it's the insurance companies who pay for your drug, 
who makes sure that you get the drugs you need on time. Or it's healthcare providers like us, doctors, pharmacists, nurses, and all the medical professions. So if anything goes wrong, the blame is pointed towards either of us three, right? What if I told you there's someone else? What if I told you there's an entity that controls all three of us? And what if I told you you might have not heard about them? Raise your hand if you know anything about PBMs or pharmacy benefit managers. Impressive. All right, so who is PBM? Who are PBMs? PBMs are the least known and least understood entity in the pantheon of this working American healthcare system. They were created around 1960s as a third party <coughs> administrators to reduce the cost and improve the health outcomes of our patients for a simple transparent exchange of a small fee. They started with an altruistic motive. They were helping, but as system grew, the complexities in the system and the gaps within the system widened, and this allowed PBMs to creatively design ways to diversify and expand their profits. Today, they cover more than 20 to 15 million American lives. But since their establishment, drug prices have skyrocketed 10 times. So here's the irony. They were brought in to reduce the cost and improve the health outcomes, but the reverse is happening today. The drug prices are going high, people are getting sicker. Not only that, pharmacies are getting ripped off and shut off, and blame is pointed towards pharma companies and players of people like us, while they have got it powerful. So powerful that three of the largest PBMs, Express Script, CVS Caremark, <coughs> and Optimarix, hold 80% of the market. They have not just gone powerful, they've gotten rich. Very, very rich. Guess what? The annual profit is $300 billion. Billion with a B. <laughs> More than any pharma manufacturing companies. So there, there's a problem. Someone else is innovating the drug, someone else is bringing the cure to the market, someone else is taking care of the patients while these middlemen are stuffing billions of dollars. For what? So when CEO of Express Trip, Tim Wentworth, was being asked, what do you guys do? He said, we take care of our patients, we negotiate with Big Pharma, and we negotiate with 70 other pharmacies. <laughs> I'm not here to tell you who's right or wrong. I'm here to show you that this is what they say and here's what I found. I found complete contradiction. If they say that they are negotiating the prices, why has prescription drug prices increased? <laughs> <laughs> increased? Why has prescription drug prices increased 110% when US economy as a whole only if you want 26%? That's a tenth of it. And if they say they take care of a patient, why do 25 million Americans complain to get sicker because of not taking the medication? and having a problem. Let me tell you, this is full of shift. <laughs> <laughs> After my trip, I started working with a startup right here in Columbus called HDS, Health Plan Data Solutions. We are a group of 15 passionate people who came together to break in this $300 billion market, fighting the raging cost of healthcare using innovative technology and real objective data. What we do is simple. We identify the problems that's been created by these metamen. We fix it, saying, here's the problem, and here's what you need to do to fix it. And we monitor them so that the problem does not happen again. And it so happened to be working so amazingly that just for one client a year ago, Ohio Medicaid, we were able to save $180 million of overcharges by these metamen. Imagine. What are you going to do for this whole nation? It is startups like HDS who have just began to uncover the healthcare corruption. And in order to raise awareness and help put an end to it, we need support from people like you, everyday users, to be a part of it. So here's what you can do. Pay attention. Healthcare is a bio based street. How is it? that we know everything about our pumpkin spice latte, but we don't know anything about when it comes to who's our primary provider, or what's our coverage benefit for our insurance. Be an information digger, it's about our health. Number two, according to Gag's law, for <coughs> years, PBMs have prevented pharmacies <coughs> from giving out the best available and most affordable option, unless customer asks. So, 
ask out loud because pharmacists are your best friend and they are here to help you. Number three, spread your options. If I would have not looked out for options, I would have ended up paying $300 to the same unjust system. Making rich even richer. Why do you do that? Curb it. Look out for options. Number four, your health data is the most invaluable asset today. Because of data, we can make those big corporations and corp organizations accountable for stealing the money out of good people and good patients. So, share your data. Because data sharing is caring today. And number five, the truth is, we all seek for transparency. Let's support it, together. Support these legislations, like the Prescription Drug Price Impact, that is moving the needle and bringing our uh, system towards a more transparent system. Support startups like HDS who are advocating for <coughs> change. Support nonprofit organizations like 46 Brooklyn, led by Antonia Chachar, who is revealing the ugliness of our systems in a beautiful visualization uh, data format. When it comes to prescription drug pricing or healthcare transparency, America can do so much better. American people deserve to know a better story, not the ones that has been told and sold by those PBMs for the past 50 years. Especially not when in the society, people like Alec are dying, middlemen are suffering billions of dollars, and as nation grapples in havoc to the rising cost of healthcare. But we live in such an interesting time. Our generation is so powerful that today we are armed with right tools, technology, and data. And we are fortunate to have the opportunity and the means to become a more informed, innovative, and influential citizen of this generation. And the beauty of being fortunate is having the power to serve ones who are not. We live in such an amazing generation that we are more connected than ever in history. And today, we are investing in a change a change that starts with you, me, and hundreds of us coming together to seek for a better future. So let's shift the way we think, reshape the legacy we live, and innovate to see a change. Because our generation is, let me tell you, hashtag unstoppable. <laughs> Thank you.